they actually did give this beautiful setup for Crash 500, um, whereby we were looking at this trend line here, break, retest, somewhere there. We looked to enter our initial sales, came back to the zone, continued entering our sales. Our stop loss was just above this zone and so, or even or even on this 78.6 level. You would have even put your stop loss straight on the line there on the 78.6. That was also a reasonable stop loss. So if ever, if ever it was hit, we're never going to have any problem. We're simply going to wait and observe. Is the market still within our zone? If not, we're simply going to take a step back and look at what price was trying to do. So meanwhile, this is the trade. Right now, this, op this moment here, this is time for scaling in. Wait, is after breaking the 0% and retesting like that, this is a moment of scaling in positions. You scale in there, your stop loss just above the 0%. You can even shift the stop loss of the trades that you ended in the morning also above the 0% there. So that you're just, or even you look at this, uh, you look at this week here, just put your stop loss just above there, it will be safe there. So there you can put your stop loss like there. Then you scale in positions. First target, we're looking at this higher low, uh, as we mentioned in the morning. So right now is the time for scaling in on crash 500. Uh, time for scaling in on crash 500. So this was the instrument that we roughly looked at in the morning. As for VIX, already we're having sales that are running on VIX because we spoke about VIX. I think last week we spoke about VIX a lot and I explained a lot about the moves that we're expecting. So VIX, there was no need for me to even explain anything much on VIX because already it's moving exactly as we had spoken. So now we are simply holding these cells, holding these cells. So <laughs> you see the problem now of spike catchers. Spike catchers, if you see how many hours is this? It's one, two, three, four, almost five hours of holding just a single position or just a single trade. The spike catchers can never do that. Why? You realize that after one, two, three, four, five spikes, just this one candle here, they enter, then they come out and they start celebrating. <laughs> then, then they call that trading. I right, come on, come on, come on. Come on. That is not that is not it. That is why this concept of spike catching, I told you in I told you last time, remove that concept of spike catching. Just trade, just trade, have the targets. Once your target is reached, you come out. Simple. Remove this whole concept of ticks, this whole concept of spikes. Just follow what the market will be telling you. If the market is saying we are buying, we buy. If the market is selling, we are selling, we sell. Simple. Forget about this whole issue of spikes and ticks, remove it. So this is the current position, the current trade that we're in for the day. Uh, then we also spoke about boom 500, which is, uh, that one still has a lot of time to, 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 to go to the zone that we're expecting. And I like, I like the way that it's actually dropping all the way to the zone. So. I like the way it's moving because it's actually confirming to what we had analyzed in the morning. We'd analyzed and said, we're looking forward to the market to either come back to the trend line or maybe respect this, um, this resistance here. This is a level of resistance that can also be respected by B5. This is a level of resistance that is plus resistance that was broken that is now acting as a support. So you see now it's already booming on the on the support there as, as we are talking. So there as well, the market can respect there because it's it's actually 38.2 for the machine. When you see the market responding on 38.2, you always know what that means. It means the momentum to the upside, it will be so strong. So that is also another area where it can actually bounce without even coming all the way to the trend line. So all you need is a confirmation. Once you get a confirmation on 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes is a very good time frame for entry. 
let me repeat this 30 minutes it's a very the best best time frame for entry is 30 minutes 15 minutes it's okay it's okay even though here and there here and there depending with different instruments as well here and there 15 minute does face some few manipulations some stop loss hands here and there you understand me so yes. b5 uh where it is now most probably it can deliver it can actually give some buying opportunities right now i'm on the one hour time frame and this one hour candle is seven minutes to close uh let me see and also my moving average my 50 exponential moving average this is the only moving average that i need just for confirmations and not not for anything else i only use it just to confirm with what i will be seeing it's just an additional confluence it's not like it gives me entries or whatever it's just an additional confluence that i look at when i'm when i'm about to enter for so for example here the market is responding on the 3.2 number one number two we are in a bullish market structure performing higher highs and higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs higher lows right number three Number three, we are at a level of support, major support, broken. It was a resistance that has broken, broken here, then retested. So it's a broken resistance that has just been retested. That's number three. Number four, we are in a bullish market. We're in a bullish channel of rally from the four hour and the daily. We're in a bullish channel. So all those four confirmations already are confirming with me that this buy opportunity can actually hold and can actually give us something can actually give us something um can actually give us something so so it's like this so that's the level of support broken retested so right now the market is just there what you, what you can do now since the one hour candle is almost closing what we can simply do is we can also consider entering using the one hour time frame as well because it simply has five minutes for this candle to close so whichever way it closes, it also can show us what might probably happen. So once this one hour candle closes, uh, this is also an opportunity worth taking. You see now, it's already booming on the zone. An opportunity worth taking. First target is the recent higher high. Second target, we're looking at the next level of uh, of resistance. Which is that zone that I marked there. So boom 500, it's actually buyable. It's actually buyable now. If you're on your MT5, time to start buying boom 500. Buy boom 500. Buy boom 500. The stop loss uh, just below this one hour uh, support. Just below this one hour support. Just below this one hour support. And you target. First target is always the recent, the previous, previous high, which is this level. Second target is that resistance. Third, third, third target. Uh, that I might be looking at is for this market to push all the way to the negative hundred percent, which is somewhere close to the uh to the trend line that we are having on the daily. On the daily, we have a major downward trend line that that is there. So you, you if you if if you see this is the trend line here. So that is also another target that one can use as a target. So this zone as well. This zone. This zone here, you can also use it as a target for your for your buys. You can use it as a target for your for your buys. I will just put this line in white like that. So even on the daily, you can also see that the moving average it's below, meaning when the moving average is below, you know what is happening. That is acting as a dynamic level of support. So meaning we have a support already on the daily that is supporting this market to go up. So targets, you can target 
this area here is your final target, this white line here, which is 4557. 4557, that region, you can target that as your final target because once it gets there, it can actually continue with this major downtrend. Major downtrend, right now we're currently in a, uh, we call it a, a counter, counter, counter trend, counter trend, which is a counter trend buying. Then maybe you can start selling from there and continue with this overall 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 bearish channel so time to enter time to buy boom 500 now time to buy boom 500 now time to buy boom 500 now i hope it's clear i hope you all you're all seeing why why i'm saying it's time to buy can you see the reasons sure sure Yes, we don't just enter, we don't just buy because we feel like buying. I have reasons for each and every setup that I take. I always have reasons. I write down and identify my reasons. Once I have that, I enter, I don't hesitate. Once once, once my, my confirmations and my confluences are written down and I have identified them, I don't hesitate. I enter. It's now time to it will, it will be time to enter and not time to start thinking. Do you get my point? So your stop loss either below the support, a safer stop loss. All right. Let me now explain this thing. A safer stop loss when you're having a Fibonacci like this, Fibonacci ratios like this. A safer stop loss is always on the next level from the level that price is respecting for example right now price is respecting the 38.2 the level below 38.2 is 50 percent so the stop loss what you can do is you can place it on 50 percent that is a safer one i'm speaking in terms of safety now you can put it just below the 50 percent or even just below just below here that one is a more safer one if ever we are going up that is a more safer, safer stop loss. You get my point? Mm -hmm. Yes. So B5, we are buying. Uh, let me just buy on this side. B5, we are buying. Our stop loss there. Our target, once we get to the recent, obviously I'm expecting it to come and break and make a higher high. But once it gets there, that's when we shift our stop losses into a winning zone. Once it gets here, okay. that is when we shift the stop loss. You don't just shift stop loss because the market is moving. Once it gets there, you can now shift your stop loss either to a winning zone or even to break even. That's that's mm -hmm. more safer. Unlike just after one boom, then you shift stop losses. No, it will come and take you out. After taking you out, not if it comes to your stop loss, then go. So first target, second target, third target. So I have three targets, one, two, and three, four, B, okay. five. So I hope it's clear. I hope it's clear. Mm. Then C, five. I also hope it's clear. So those are the two instruments that one can actually choose to focus on today, if ever. You already have running trades on the VIX. You can as well. Uh, we, are, we, we, we. I, I showed you the targets for VIX, so I don't think I still need to explain much there. I showed you and explained all the targets that we are targeting for VIX. So nothing much to talk about on VIX. So far, we are. We are. We are. I, 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 li I like the structure on 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 Crash Five Hundred. The structure on Crash 500 is so, so interesting. If you check on one hour, on one hour, you have something like a double top and a neckline. Double top here. Double top, neckline. Broken neckline, retested. These are the moments that we want. Break and retest. Then we enter after the retest. Our stop loss above. Those are the moment, best, best moments of entry. Break retest like that. That's what we want to see. 
even the moving average is also most probably going up there. So crash 500 is a very beautiful one, very beautiful one moving, still moving our way, still moving our way. So this is what I'm currently seeing. Any questions, any questions before we look at something different? Do you have any questions? Anyone with a question? No. Okay, so let me just divert and start to look at the real markets. Real markets. I hope you all, you all understand my language when I say real markets. Because those ones that you are trading, they are synthetic markets. Synthetic markets, they are man-made. Man-made in the sense that uh, whatever is happening, they are copying from the real markets. They imitated the real markets and constructed what we call synthetic indices. So these are the real markets now. You will discover that sometimes other manipulations that you might find on synthetic markets, on real markets, you rarely find you find them. You rarely might not even see them. So last time I was speaking of the dollar index. This is the dollar index. It's also abbreviated as the, the DXY. So this is my watch list. On my watch list, I only focus on these two. These are my two top instruments that I look at. US 30 being the first instrument, my top, top, top one. Uh, then GBP USD is an extra instrument. All these ones, I don't trade them. Gold, USDJ, boy, all these, they're just for analysis sake. But me, US 30, GBP USD, these are my top two instruments. So you actually need to familiarize yourself with this trading view. In as much as most of you now know how to use this trading view dot binary, but you actually now need to start familiarizing yourself with the real trading view for the real markets, which is this one. It's a very, very, very good platform, a very, very good, beautiful, beautiful platform, a very beautiful platform. So this right now I'm on the monthly time frame, and I'm on the dollar index, the DXY. The dollar index, what is the dollar index? This is an instrument that is used to measure the strength of the US dollar compared to other currencies. An instrument that is used to measure the strength of the US dollar compared to other currencies on the global market. So why is it so important to look at the dollar index before even looking looking at other currencies because whatever you're going to see and identify on the dollar index for example this was a bullish market this this dollar index ever since this year started ever since this year ever since last year may may june 2021 it has been going up meaning the us dollar compared to other currencies it has been gaining strength ever since May last year, right? So this is you now gathering data before you even start making trading decisions. You are gather, gathering data, gathering information that is so relevant. So once I have done that, and I've realized this thing has been on a bullish market, I identify the channel, the channel, the bullish channel, First touch, second touch, I extend. Third touch here, this was a buying opportunity. All the dollar pairs, all the USD pairs, uh, USD pairs I'm referring to, I'm referring to, uh, okay, let me give an example, the practical one. A practical example, let me see if I can give a practical example, right. USD, XXX, and XXX, USD. Though that XXX is just, it, it's just a resemble the symbol of any other instrument that you might trade, whether it's your USD JPY, your USD ZAR, um, USD ZAR, uh, then XX, USD, your Euro USD, your gold, 
uh, your USDT, USD, your so your GBP, USD, all those instruments. Right. So, what does this mean? This means that when the dollar is gaining strength like this, all these USDXX pairs, all the pairs that start with the US dollar, um, like that, USDJPY, USDZAR, USDCHF, all these pairs for ever since June 2021, you realize that most probably, most probably all of them were also having this this channel like this, this upward bullish uh, market like this. Why? Because the US dollar index, it controls all the pairs that start with the USD excess. If, if, if ever it's going up, it means the dollar is going up. When the dollar is going up, USD JPY it has to go up. USD ZI has to go up. USD CHF it has to go up. Then XX USD, the pairs that end with the US dollar. Euro USD, you discover that it was having the opposite of this. Gold, the opposite, US 30, the opposite, GBP USD, the opposite. Let's go to USD JPY. On USD JPY, we have to see a bullish market ever since May, June 2021. Let's go to USD JPY. Let's go to USD JPY. USD JPY, here we are. Can you see what I'm talking about? Exactly as what we are talking about. Thanks. Exactly as what we are talking about. The US dollar index has been bullish ever since March, March, June, June, May, June. Yeah. Check what happened to USD JPY from that May, June period. Boomed all the way, exactly as what the USD, the US dollar index is doing. Meaning someone who has this understanding of what I'm telling you, May, June, after having analyzed and seen everything, you could have actually predicted where USD JPY was going. Just by looking at the dollar index, you could have actually made a decision and started buying USD JPY since that time. Obviously, when you buy, especially when you have such a channel like this, this was a, this is a, what we call an uh an asymmetrical triangle whereby you're having you're having higher higher lows and lower highs this is an asymmetrical triangle asymmetrical triangles most of the time they break in the direction of their initial movement their initial movement was a bullish movement so most of the times they break in the same direction as their initial movement like this so this one, it was actually a buying opportunity ever since the year began. USDJPY was a buying opportunity. Can I tell you uh, something that you might not know, most of you? Can I tell you something? Yes. yes. Do you know that the majority, the majority of all the people that you know that have money, all the millionaires and the billionaires that you know, that might not be publicly traders. All your presidents, all your ministers, all your parliament guys, all your, even some of the prophets, the major prophets that you know, all your, I'm talking about the real men of God, I'm not talking about the fake ones. Uh, all your very famous people that you know, all those big, big people that you know, that you might not be knowing publicly to be traders. Do you know that 95% of them, they invest in forex trading. When I mean invest, they don't trade the way you trade. They, they, they trade in, a, in an investing form. Those kinds of traders, we call them positional traders. Positional traders is a person who can enter a position today and they are looking forward to closing that position 
months months later whether it's two months three months four months five months six months or 12, 12 months later that is what we call a positional trader mm -hmm. so the majority of them they fall under that category what they do after they go to the experts after approaching experts and they they get their given all this information to say the USDJPY, we're expecting this, we're looking at this. After they go to the technical analysts and they are given the data of what is happening and what they're expecting, what they do, they take whatever millions that they have, whatever billions that they have, they invest in the USDJPY here in the beginning of the year because the technical analysts, obviously, they've analyzed and gathered their data. And according to their data, they're expecting the USDJPY to go up right so beginning of the year they pump in all their monies here their first target may be of taking profits or shifting uh, their stop losses is this level here the same way you you as a day trader the same way you trade on a smaller time frame perspective, whether it's a one hour perspective or a 30 minute or a four hour perspective, the same way you do it, they are doing it at a larger scale. So one month, two months, three months. So all this, what they do, they just come at the end of the month and they look at how the previous month candle closed. They just look at that and they are done. They just look at the market at a monthly basis, not at a daily basis, like what we guys do. So <coughs> what they have done, this was the first target that they were looking at after the break and the retest here. They also pump in more dollars here. Their target now, they are looking at this. Remember, according to a technical analyst point of view, the size of the initial move most probably it has to be equal to the size of the outside move somewhere somehow they're expecting to take their profits of the buy only so they were buying only they were never selling somewhere somehow they're expecting to take in Close their positions. Let me just draw my trend lines properly. Somewhere, somewhere around those levels, around those areas, there, which is almost here. It's almost approaching. It's almost approaching. I think it is this candle. Uh, it's almost approaching. It. So if not, if not, it is already approached. If not, it is already approached. Let me draw it in this way. Right, right. This one is, is better. Right. So this one, according to this one now, already their target has been reached. For all these months holding buys, their target has been reached. They withdraw their millions and their billions. Then they wait for the next best opportunity. The same way you do at a smaller perspective, they do it at a higher higher, 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 higher perspective. So don't even be deceived and think that those guys, they don't know about this thing. They know, they know about this thing and they are doing it silently without even telling you guys. You understand? So I'm, I, I, why am I saying this? I'm, I'm simply saying this to show you that you need to, if ever you are not yet taking this thing as seriously as you should, you need to start taking it as seriously as you should because if ever such powerful people, they are taking this thing seriously because they know, they know, they know the value of the industry. They know the value of the industry. In as much as they might be politicians, whatever they have industries that, that they're involved in, but 
So when you see people now saying, ah, these presidents, these parliament people, they are eating our money. Don't, don't, don't even think that those guys are even eating your money. The majority of them, they, they simply <laughs> take their monies, they come here, they multiply their monies. Then when you see them driving fancy things, then you think those guys are even chowing your money. Those guys, they, they, the majority of them, yes, they are corrupt ones, I know, but they are also the legit ones that are actually wise in, in their dealings. They actually know faster ways of multiplying the money that they have, which one of them is the Forex market. So position trading, that one is a higher level of trading. Why? Because they, they now you are not as worried about daily returns. Uh, you are much more focused on a higher time frame perspective more than the smaller daily perspective. So USDJPY going up. USDs are just want to show you that these things, they are practical things, practical matters. USDs are June, May, June, July, going up. Same, same thing as the US dollar index. Let's look at the USD CHF. USD, US dollar S2. So this one, it was also going up even though it wasn't going that much. Going up, but not that much as, uh, because it also, it's also another different instrument that moves in a random way. So let's look at the opposite. GBP USD, it has to be, it has to be going down. <laughs> Was going down ever since that same time. Gold. Let's look at gold. It has to be going down since ever since that same time. It's going down ever since ever since this year began. January, going down. Let's look at US state. US state, US state, US state. Going down. Yes. So these things that I'm telling you, it's not like we are guessing these things or we are, these are things that are living, things that are practical. So, the dollar index, once you've analyzed the dollar index, you have, you have the overall picture of what all these other instruments might perform. For example, according to the dollar index, this is the monthly time frame. We're in a, in a bullish channel. I'm still expecting the dollar index to reach the top of the channel like right there, then maybe start to drop from there, right? So I still have that move that's, that is still yet to be fulfilled. I also drew a trend line as well on a weekly time frame. this trend line that I said, so long this trend line is not broken, the, the dollar index is still going to push higher and reach my target. This trend line, touch, 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 touch. So, so long this trend line, so yeah, maybe it can decide to do this, then go, but simply, I'm still expecting the market to come to the top of the channel there before going down. Already, I have a projection already, and I know what to expect on all those current pairs that I have mentioned. So going down to a lower time frame, I simply, so I can even analyze the dollar index and go to the certain instrument that I, that I'm, I want to trade and actually place a trade without much analysis because already the dollar index has given me the direction already, overall direction that the instrument can go. So on the daily, I have this higher low area, higher low zone, higher high area there. So if you check here, it failed to make a higher high. As you can see, higher high, uh, higher low, failed to make a higher high here. Maybe, from that zone, it can start to drop, coming to the trend line, coming to the trend line like this, and maybe continue all the way like this. So I'm now doing a projection now. 
So just analyzing the dollar index, I can actually predict what gold will do, what GBPUSD will do, what all those instruments that I mentioned will do. I would have already made a decision already based on the dollar index. Already I can see that we have established a level of support. So, so long this support is maintained, this market can still push further up. As it pushes further up, we want to see its response on this zone. We want to see its response on this level of resistance. Once it breaks this resistance, we are going up. It's just a continuation. We're going up all those pairs that I've mentioned. You just trade alongside with what the US dollar index would have just presented. So best, best buying opportunity above this resistance. Above this resistance. Above this resistance. Best buying opportunity. Best selling opportunity below this support. Already I've analyzed almost every pair, just by analyzing the dollar index. I've analyzed already what all those pairs might do as well. So if it goes up the US dollar index, I know that USD JPY most probably can still go up. If it goes up, I know that gold still can go, can still continue going down. So already I have an analysis already. Already this is the same thing that made us to give a sell projection for US 30. US 30 USD, uh, we gave a sell because of what we are seeing. This support here, the market is pushing up so many, the US dollar can still continue going up, meaning the US state can still continue going down. So that is what you do whenever you're analyzing currencies. Start from the dollar index. Once you've done an analysis on the dollar index, you don't need much effort to analyze the other pairs. You don't need much effort there on the other pairs. You spend much time there. Once you've done that, once you've analyzed the dollar index, you are done. All those other pairs, it's just, uh, you are just, you're just, it's just a walk over. Just a walk over all those other pairs. I hope it's clear. Yeah. Yes, so that is it, that is it, that is it, that is it.